Hey guys, this is Erwan Youssef. If you haven't been to this channel before, I do a lot of travel, cooking, and food content. This time we've partnered up with American Tourister to show you one of my favorite mountains that's not too far from Metro Manila. This is Mount Ugo. I'm officially freaking out. I'm supposed to be packing because I leave in an hour and a half um, to go to Mount Ugo. Because I'm packing food also for four people. I think I have too much food and it might be too heavy. See what happens, I guess, right? Okay, we'll see. Today we're doing a quick travel one. What we're doing is we're going to Baguio, take a nice little bus ride there, maybe four or five hours depending on the traffic. And we're gonna attempt to climb Mount Ugo. Apparently it's a nice challenging hike. So it should take us about 10 to 12 hours to get up there. Next day we'll do a small ascent and then we'll come back on day two. So we're trying to do this in like a two day time frame. So right now I'm on my way to meet Koi, who's gonna be our guide for this hike. This bus is so fancy, it comes with like a blanket. Got my little double-sided pillow. Get to go, get nice and cozy, settle in. I'm actually really surprised. I thought it would take much longer to get to Baguio. We left at 11 p.m. We got here around 2.38, which is about three hours and 38, which is actually really not that bad. And whoever said, you know, buses get a bad rep in the Philippines, they usually do. That was actually quite comfortable. This is where I guess the hard work begins. Shake away, my friends. Here. So this officially marks our jump off point for the Mount Ugo expedition. From here, it's a 10 hour hike with just lots of hard work. Uh, we're gonna break for lunch. We've got all our food and supplies ready. All our guides are here, our porters. Should be a good time. Let's go. The following are the entry exit points to and from Mount Ugo. Tinongdan proper through Lusod is the one we did. It would take you about eight hours to summit straight. The trail is about 35 kilometers with an elevation gain of about 2,000 meters or a 50 to 60% vertical inclination. Your second option is Tinongdan proper through Ambasa. This is an uphill downhill trail with Mount Mercurit as really the front destination. Your third option is Dalupirip through Mount Palanche. This is recommended for people who want to explore new trails and try something new. Your fourth option is Binguet to Nueva Vizcaya boundary at Barangay Pangawan to Indupit, Cayapa, Nueva Vizcaya. This is probably the most common trail. Your fifth option is Cayapa Central through Indupit. This can be quite difficult as well. And finally, Cayapa proper through Tomopos. It takes an hour ride to get to the jump off point, which is why this is probably not one of the most popular ways to get there. So we're only at kilometer three, I think, and it's already. <laughs> Getting quite challenging. Yeah, because this is the way you should be moving. Natural movement, probably the best thing for you. That's the reason why they say you shouldn't drink water down river, because you're drinking his feet. That escalated quickly. Uh, going on to, just coming on to kilometer five. <laughs> and it is just uphill after uphill. Still having fun though. This view will always make it worth it though. Gorgeous. Delicious fresh guava. Nature provides. Uh, 
a couple of options usually for different people who are attempting to get to this mountain from this trailhead. And you could either stop here, stay, maybe try to get one of the homestays in this small village. There's about 100 people who live here. Or you could continue on to 11 kilometers, or you could continue on to 14 kilometers. Before we do that, we need some food. We're actually gonna make really simple food. I got some corned beef, I got some green peas, and I got some ready cooked rice. So one of our crew members got cramps. When you do get cramps, very important, get your sodium in, get your carbs in, get your rests in, and then hopefully be able to start the next day all over again without tearing a muscle. All right, now we go straight to our corned beef soup. Soup gratiné à la corned beef uh, Philippine. So once your meat is cooking, I can go ahead and enjoy my meal already. It looks oh so tasty. We've decided to camp out at kilometer nine because the team has been having some issues. Someone's been cramping and we're moving, I think, too slow at a pace. We won't make the, the 11 kilometer, but it's still such a gorgeous day. Like, the skies are blue, barely any clouds. These trees are absolutely magnificent. Oh. Woo! We made it. We are now 4.30 p.m., about to set up camp and to get ready for the night. I love, absolutely love the weather. It's nice and cool, and I'm sure it's gonna drop even further tonight. For those of you who are wondering what the difficulty of the trail is, it's, I had some parts where I was kind of like struggling a little bit. I really was sweating like buckets the whole way through. It's not an easy hike. I would say it's kind of like moderate to moderate hard, but definitely with a little bit of training and people with good cardio and a good heart can definitely make it up here. Tomorrow morning, we're gonna get up at three in the morning and go all over there to Mount Ugo, and which is an additional six kilometers. So if we do it at 3 a.m., should get there by sunrise by 6 a.m. That's a cow. Don't mind the cow. There's a lot of cows here. Come and join me in the pie. So Koi is one of the most OG trail runners in the country, and he's gonna show me how I'm a, such a terrible runner in mountains. <laughs> hear the cows out still. I think we're gonna hear them all the longer they get closer and closer because I think they smell the food and for safety precautions we have to keep the food all in our tent right here in the vestibule so that <laughs> should be interesting because this is the only thing protecting us. Couldn't get back bro. <laughs> everywhere dude. Shit. <laughs> I'll see you guys there. Peace out. <gasps> okay, so yesterday was pretty interesting. You know that scene in Blair Witch Project where all the kids are hitting the tent? It was the same thing except it was cows. And they were just kind of like putting their faces in our tent and just trying to grab yeah. stuff and made our food there. So it's all around here, as you can see. <laughs> Uh, so we're just having our coffee. Um, I'm gonna put a sweet potato and something, maybe some peanut butter, before we head out. It's just me and Koi going up. Just the both of us. Uh, we're starting our trek pitch dark. Starting very good. 
Time to warm up. Just feels good. Look at this view. It's absolutely crazy. So we're almost there. We're almost there. You can still see the moon up there. It's getting steeper, which means we're getting close. Almost there, Koi. Almost. <laughs> Here. Woohoo! Congrats, man. 200. Thank you. Woo, that was fun. Good job, Corey. That was too easy for you. I mm, know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, time check 6 15. So it took us two hours and 15 minutes, which is not bad. So I think we tried to do it extra early so we could get a really beautiful sunrise. You could probably do it a bit later, but you wouldn't want to because it might get too hot further down the day. So we're gonna have a quick snack and then go right back down. So when you're up here, enjoy the view. <laughs> our adventure on top of a jeepney with my man Corey. Thank you, sir. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed that. That mountain was awesome. We're going to hit some more soon. And as always, please make sure to subscribe to the channel, like, comment below, and watch out for our next video. There's a lot more interesting stuff coming with American Tourister, and it's all going to be really great, exciting, and different. So check it out soon. See you guys. See ya.